Hi and a very good evening to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming examination. As you all know, I am Gulabsa, your mentor for finance and I welcome you once again to our channel. So in today's session, we are going to have an answer writing class but yet in a very unconventional manner. What is that so? So in today's class, we will have an answer writing based on a case study. I know you know that if we do the past year analysis of the descriptive questions that has been asked in finance, specifically, all questions are very direct in nature and to a certain extent are easier as compared to the objective questions being asked, right? But we have also seen that in case of management, case study based questions are asked in the examination. We do not know, right? Ki kal ko jaakar examiner kaisa paper aapke samne present karte. What if case study based questions are asked in finance uh, in the finance section as well? So we are here with you to prepare you for the worst. Taaki kaisa bhi situation ho, whatever be the situation, whatever be the level of the question, you are well prepared to answer it well with us because of the immense practice that you will do through these sessions. So guys, today in today's class, we will take up a case study. I know case study do not appear in your exam, but let's prepare for the worst. What benefit will you get from answering or learning to write answer writing through a case study is that first you will gain conceptual clarity as regard to the topic that we are going to take up. Second, aapko case study kaise solve karna hi, wo aapko samajha jayega. Even if such questions are not asked in finance, you will have a better idea to answer questions if asked in management. Case study solve karna bhoat important hai for you to excel in the examination. Third, we'll also learn to do answer writing, descriptive answer likhenge based on the case study. See students, there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge aap sab ke paas hoga because of the end number of books that you must be reading. Jo bhi conceptual clarity aap ke paas hai, all constitutes your knowledge. Wisdom comes, wisdom comes with practice. So, jab tak aap answer writing khud nahi karoge, koi book aapko nahi sikha sakta answer writing kaise karni hai. That can only happen over a period of time. Once you practice, dousro ka answer dekho, try to get ki usne kaisa likha hai, right? Because there are any number of ways in which an answer can be written. So, your task would be to structure it well, provide beautiful examples to those questions. If there is a scope of providing such examples, crisp, concise examples, write in a very simple language and take it forward with a very impactful conclusion. Is ki through hi aap ek bohat acha answer lik sakte ho, right? So without any delay, let's get started with today's session. Jaha pe hum ek case study ko lehenge aur based on that case study, we will see and understand ki agar aisa koi question exam mein aan jata hai, even if it is not very direct, how are you going to answer it in the paper? Right students? So let's start. So this is the case study in front of you. Saath mein padhenge, let's understand case study bolna kya cha raha hai. How are we supposed to approach questions like this? Kaise case study ko padhte hai? Kya samajna hai hume? Or kya key points maha se hume nikalna hai? Right? So let's see. So this is the case study. So this case study talks about a company, a multinational company by the name ABC Incorporation, right? So this, so first paragraph, so this first paragraph talks about how ABC Incorporation is a multinational company uh, working on having its operation across different geographical locations and therefore all of its subsidiaries are actually engaging in different kind of currencies. So, you have to understand that they engage in transactions denominated in multiple currencies. So, you have to understand that you have to understand that currencies are very multiple. Hai. First factor. Second, since the nature of the business is global, right? Different currencies are different. Second, since the nature of the business is global, right? Different currencies are transact different. The company that is ABC Incorporation is exposed to various risks. Right? Kaafi different kinds of risks 
this company is facing. For example, they have given you the example transaction risk, economic risk, and translation risk. Now, if you have your static part from here itself, you can identify that here is talking about here they are talking about forex exposure. Currency ki exposure jo hoti hai kisi bhi country ko. And why are we saying that there is an exposure? Because currency, the exchange rate between two currencies can change, right? There can be n number of factors. Let's suppose, agar hum domestic factors ki bhi baat kare, then let's suppose increase in domestic inflation could lead to a change in the exchange rates between two currencies. Similarly, if there is a war-like situation or the recent example, agar aap Newspapers rose pad rahe ho, you, we all know global slowdown or the COVID-19 pandemic that happened ya phir jo Russia-Ukraine war hai, global supply chain disruption se, all of these causes or has an impact on the foreign exchange rates. Theek hai? To aapko yuna pe samaj aagaya that they are talking about forex exposures or the risk exposures jo humne static part mein zaroor padha hoga. So first paragraph is clear to all of you. Let's move forward to the second paragraph. Now second paragraph, we we see very carefully here the talk about that ABC Incorporation now takes up or acquires another subsidiary in some another geographical location, right? So it says that ABC Incorporation acquires a new subsidiary in Brazil. Why Brazil me a new subsidiary le raha hai? For the simple reason that it wants to use it as a base in order to enter other Latin American markets. Previously or pehle it already has lots of uh, global global exposures. There are global footings hai in the second world countries and third world countries. Already they have their established bases. Now they want to enter the Latin American part. And for that, they have acquired a subsidiary in Brazil. Now, whatever transaction this Brazilian company or the subsidiary situated in Brazil does is in the form of Brazilian real, the currency of Brazil. Okay? So, and again, you can send out that yes, there's another kind of currency that is being added. Already uh, UK, uh, in the US, the UK, Europe, may a company function kar rahi thi. Its subsidiaries were functioning, functioning and operating. Now another uh, country has been added. And with that another currency exposure, this parent company will now have to face. And that exposure will be from Brazilian real. Uh, in the second paragraph, mein, now they talk about the type of company this uh, subsidiary is, which is located in Brazil. So it says that the subsidiary manufactures and sells high-end consumer electronics and has significant market share in Brazil. Right. So in have to tell that the electronics ki inki market hai, and there is a significant share which this subsidiary can tap in the Brazilian market. So in have to simple talking about setting up or acquiring another subsidiary in a different location, geographical location with a different currency exposure. Now comes the third paragraph. A third paragraph, if you will see, here we talk about the different kind of risk or the different kind of risk exposure that this ABC Incorporation will be facing. So here it says that however ABC Incorporation fears or faces several risk in its operation. So here you have risk ke baat ke liye hai. and if you see they have talked about three kinds of risk. First, second and third. Sabse pehla risk kya bata raha hai? It says that the Brazilian real is volatile and subject to fluctuations due to changes in the Brazilian economy. So they have talked about how the Brazilian economy or the Brazilian real, the currency, the domestic currency of Brazil is volatile because of political instability and because of that, there is going to be certain changes with regards to the operations and the revenues in the op uh, revenue operations of the company. So if you see here we are talking about a kind of risk which is nothing but the economic risk or the economic exposure. Operating risk kya economic exposure you have in here. First risk talks about economic exposure. Secondly, it talks about that the subsidiary's financial statements are denominated in Brazilian real. So the subsidiary which is situated in Brazil, uski jo statements hai, financial statements jo bane hue hai, profit and loss account, balance sheet, wo sara kisi currency mein denominate hoga. Agar Indian company hai, wo rupees mein denominate karegi. Let's suppose uh, building worth, worth rupees 
थाउजेंड करोर्स आ गए रुपीज में हम डिनोमिनेट कर रहे हैं दे आर डिनोमिनेटिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ ब्रेजीलियन रेल ठीक है तो यहाँ पे करेंसी एक्सपोजर की बात की जा रही है जिसकी वजह से फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में इम्पैक्ट पड़ सकता है नाउ अगर आपको स्टैटिक पोर्शन क्लियर है सबसे पहले हमने तीन रिस्क की बात करी थी दिस टॉक्स अबाउट द सेकेंड काइंड ऑफ रिस्क दैट इज ट्रांसलेशन रिस्क और दी अकाउंटिंग एक्सपोजर रिस्क Here you would see that no cash flow actually takes place. There is no outflow or inflow of cash. Rather, this risk arises whenever a company, the parent company, wants to consolidate the financial statements. आप सबको पता है एक holding company होती है and this holding company has lots of subsidies, right? इनकी खुद की subsidies होती है. Now, whenever how would this holding company know whether on a global level or whether on a consolidated level? This company is making profit, or what is the position of this company? That can only happen if all of the financial statements, let's suppose the profit and loss account, the balance sheet of each of these subsidies, अगर उसको हम consolidate ना करें holding level पे, तो आपको consolidate करना है in order to understand the profitability and the financial position of the holding company or of the parent company as a whole. Secondly, in order to compare these different subsidies, आपको as a parent company you would like to know whether your Brazilian office or a Brazilian subsidiary is doing better or uh, the subsidiary situated in Iran is doing better. तो ये आप कैसे comparative performance निकाल पाओगे अपनी subsidiary की? That can only happen if you could have the figures. Of the financial statement in one specific denominated currency, be it, be it dollar or be it any other currency. Okay. So here, we have talked about this thing. Second, we have talked about translation exposure or the accounting exposure, which says that it creates translation risk when they are consolidated with ABC's financial statement. Now, we have a very important to ABC incorporation. Hai. That is the parent company. It denominates all its financial statements in terms of U.S. dollars. So exchange rate, जो होगी वो U.S. dollar के बीच में होगी and with regards to the different currency, Brazilian real आ जाएगा and other currencies will fall in place. ठीक है? Third kind of risk that they are talking about is With regards to the transaction risk, so here see that the subsidiary suppliers are in China and Europe. What does that mean? So this ABC Corporation has its subsidiaries in different parts. How do you know the suppliers? Electronic market in electronic market may enter कर रहे हैं. So all kinds of raw materials will be supplied from the Chinese market or from the European market. Therefore, the suppliers who are situated in these countries will be uh, denominating the prices or the value of the uh, of the raw materials in terms of Chinese yuan in case of China or the Chinese renminbi, or in case or in terms of euros if the supplier is situated in Europe. So यहाँ पे भी आप देख रहे हो एक तरीके का currency exposure है because uh, we let's suppose the ABC incorporation. Purchases this raw material and he is situated in US or let's suppose even it is situated in Brazil. आपको payment Chinese yuan में या फिर euros में करने होंगे and that will bring another kind of risk. And since it is related to the transaction, such kind of risk is known as transaction risk. So I hope the concept आपको समझ आ गया होगा. The three types of risk. Which are mentioned in the case study is also very clear to you. So ये आपको identify करना था कि translation risk कौन सी है, transaction risk कौन सी है और economic exposure कौन सी है. ये आप तभी identify कर पाओगे first if you have uh, gone through the static part very religiously and second you you have identified the basic difference between these three kinds of risk. Overlap भी हो सकती है but you need to identify. The difference or the distinction between these three different kinds of risk or exposure. So I hope the case study is clear to you. Let's move forward and let's see what question can be asked from such a case study. ये case study आपने देख लिया. There can be multiple choice questions as well, जो आप आराम से answer कर सकते हो. If asked, however, if a descriptive answer is, if a descriptive question is asked based on such a case study, how are you going to handle it? Help in case of God forbid if it is asked in the examination. 
सबसे पहले सबसे पहले क्वेश्चन को देखते हैं सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू वेयर बाय इट सेज दैट व्हाट आर द मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ रिस्क टू व्हिच एवीसी इनकॉर्पोरेशन इज एक्सपोज्ड टू आल्सो हाईलाइट द स्पेसिफिक टेक्निक्स टू सॉल्व दीस टाइप्स ऑफ रिस्क सो इन आवर लास्ट फाइनेंस आंसर राइटिंग सीरीज वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम्स और द प्रैक्टिकल सिचुएशन that a student faces while attempting an answer in the examination hall aaj ki class mein we are going to talk about the basics of answer writing so any answer writing comprises of just three steps first is understanding the question question ki understanding hona bahut hi important hai in order to answer well in order to understand what is the demand of the question what does the examiner wants to know from you as a examining theek hai तो यहाँ पे अगर आप देखोगे सो हाउ हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट यू नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट आर द व्हाट व्हाई वेयर हाउ ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सबसे पहले वो आपको आइडेंटिफाई करना है सेकंड यू नीड टू पिक अप द की वर्ड्स की इस क्वेश्चन में की वर्ड्स क्या है सो फर्स्ट इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग द क्वेश्चन अगर इस क्वेश्चन की हम बात करें यहाँ पे सिंपल है दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ मल्टी नेशनल कंपनी एंड दे आर आस्किंग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ रिस्क आर दीज मल्टी नेशनल कंपनी एक्सपोज टू और वो हमने अच्छे से केस स्टडी में पढ़ लिया तो देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ रिस्क दैट एनी मल्टी नेशनल कंपनी और एनी कंपनी दैट हैज एन इंटरनेशनल प्रेजेंस फेसिस दी थ्री रिस्क आर फर्स्ट द ट्रांजेक्शन रिस्क राइट रिलेटेड टू इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट एनी लेंडिंग बोर्विंग डन the second kind of risk is the translation risk or the accounting risk what is this risk so whenever the parent company wants to consolidate the financial statements of all the subsidiaries together at one place to for two reasons first to know the performance of it as a whole and second to compare or to have a relative performance of all the subsidiaries then these kind of parent company or the multinational companies are exposed to translation risk or accounting exposure risk the third kind of risk that we talked about was economic risk or the economic exposure or the operating exposure so whenever there are changes or whenever there is political instability or there is unanticipated changes in the exchange rate let's suppose domestic inflation bahut zyada high ho gaya uske wajah se exchange rate pe jo changes padenge with regards to another currency that will constitute your economic Exposure or your economic risk. Again, transaction or economic exposure. थोड़ा सा similar हमें लगता है. For the simple reason that in case of translation risk, there is no kind of cash flow that is actually flowing. However, in case of transaction and economic exposure, cash flow is involved. Transaction risk के अंदर you will have to keep this point in mind कि transaction risk जब भी होगा, there a transaction is already transacted. Or let's suppose and uh, the deal for a trans the deal for any kind of goods or services is already been transacted for example if abc incorporation ask its suppliers situated in china to uh, deliver or if abc wants to purchase certain goods let's suppose uh, uh, let's suppose any kind of raw materials that abc wants to purchase from china and the payment is to be done after 3 months and such kind of exposure for these 3 month period will be known as transaction exposure kyunki 3 mahine ke baad wo liability aayegi for abc incorporation and abc would have to make payment for such transaction and therefore such kind of exposure for the 3 month period because uh, the company doesn't know ki within 3 months what will be the exchange rate or how the exchange rate is going to fluctuate this is not known to the company and therefore this is known as transaction exposure because there is already a deal however in case of economic exposure the deal is under negotiation deal abhi puri nahi hui hai why uh, the deal is under negotiation any factors that affect or if there is any unanticipated changes in the exchange rate then that is going to have an impact on the value of value of the ठीक है तो लेट्स सपोज डील वाज गोइंग ऑन टू परचेज सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल्स एट दिस एंड दिस प्राइस हाउ जब तक वो प्राइस पे हमें खरीदना था आर करेंसी डेप्रिसिएटेड अ लॉट ठीक है सो इस केस में क्या होगा यू विल हैव टू मेक मोर पेमेंट फॉर द सेम 
price for which the deal had been executed. So these are known as economic exposure where the deal is not fixed. However, because of changes in the exchange rate has an impact on the cash flow or on the value of the firm. Operating exposure. Not only about the changes in the exchange rate, let's suppose political instability ho jati hai, wahan ki government system fail ho jati hai. In that case also, such uh, this, this such kind of activity will have an impact on the currency and will encompass your economic exposure. I hope these three kinds of exposures are clear to you. Aapko bas inhi teen ko apne answer mein produce karna hai. So first we talk about understanding the question. Wherever you have understand the what, why, where, how of question. Second, identifying the keywords. Do keywords hai, the type of risk that any international business or any multinational company faces. The second question talks about how or what are the specific techniques or methods to solve these types of risks. Aap kaise in se solve, in ko solve kar sakte ho. So we all know whenever currency exposures ya foreign, foreign exchange exposures hoti hai, in such a case, the company usually go for derivatives. Aapne derivatives ka naam suna hoga, ya phir hedging ka naam suna hoga. Hedging is basically done in order to mitigate any kind of risk. ठीक है तो यहाँ पे more or less hedging use होगा in case of translation exposure if I talk about यहाँ पे क्या use हो सकता है you can ask your subsidiary to maintain the books of account in terms of the US dollar itself parent company जिस currency में maintain कर रही है the subsidiary could also maintain in that currency and therefore at the end of the year whenever the consolidation is to be done the statement will not be faced to any kind of translation exposure. So, we will have answers bar mein padhenge. The second type or the second nuances or the fundamentals of writing a better answer or a good answer is to have a proper expression. What do you mean by expression? Expression ka kya matlab hota hai? You should have a logical flow of idea in your answer. एक बहुत ही कंसाइज वे में आपको अपनी आंसर को लिखना है एंड इट शुड हैव ऑल द मेजर पॉइंट्स डिफरेंशिएटेड फ्रॉम वन अनदर सो दैट द एग्जामिनर डज नॉट हैव टू पुट एफर्ट्स और गिव इन इट्स एफर्ट्स इन ऑर्डर टू डिस्टिंग्विश कि फर्स्ट पार्ट कहां है सेकंड पार्ट कहां है ये सारी चीजें आपको एक्सप्रेशन के अंदर ध्यान रखना है द थर्ड मेजर थिंग इज दैट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरिंग व्हिच यू कैन डू विद द हेल्प ऑफ एग्जांपल्स सो स्ट्रक्चरिंग वी ऑल नो दैट वी नीड टू राइट एन इंट्रोडक्शन फॉलोड बाय द बॉडी देन द कंक्लूजन हाउएवर दिस इज नॉट ओनली व्हाट स्ट्रक्चरिंग मींस इसके अलावा भी आपको क्या करना है यू नीड टू प्रोवाइड relevant and suitable examples, short, crisp, relevant and suitable examples wherever you can provide. So, what will happen? Better structuring will be your answer ki, and that will outstand from the other answers that other people would be writing in the examination hall. See, if you want to score the best of the best marks for that, you will have to put in more and more efforts. And in my last video as well, finance answer writing, I have asked all of you to practice answer writing in an exam-like environment. And I asked to mention it in the comment section, con con follow kiya hai, what were your experiences, but I didn't find any comment uh, telling the experience that you had with your answer writing. That means either you are not practicing or either you don't want to answer. Right, but please make use of that video link that I have provided you. Jab aap examination hall mein jaoge, Trust me guys, descriptive answer writing mein wahi hoga. There will be n number of noises. Typing noise bohat zyada hoge. Tak 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 ki awaz hoge. And you need to frame your answer. Question pehli baar aap dekh rahe hoge. And you will have to write your answer in this stipulated time. Or wo habit, wo aap maha pe achche se kaise produce kar pao ge. Only and only if you have practiced well. Thik hai? So please practice well. Now let's see the answer that I have written for all of you. Question aapko samaj a gaya. Now let's talk about the answer. Jo mere likha hai. So this question is for 15 marks. 600 words mein aapko likhna hai. This is the model answer that I have prepared for all of you guys. Ab, aisa nahi hai that you are going to memorize. Rote learning nahi karni hai ki see bhi question ki. Because you do not know whether this question is going to be asked in the examination. Second, even if you read or try to uh, replicate the same in the examination. 
Trust me, guys. Only sixty percent of this would be remembered by you, and only around thirty to forty percent could be replicated in the examination. आप बस तीस से चालीस परसेंट इसका प्रोड्यूस कर सकते हो अपने एग्जामिनेशन में. Therefore, try to identify your way of writing an answer in a very structured manner. यहाँ से बस आपको आइडियाज लेने हैं, and then you need to think and put yourself in that zone of writing a much better answer maybe than this. ठीक है? Now let's see the answer. तो सबसे पहला क्वेश्चन क्या है डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन पूछा गया है आपसे व्हाट आर द मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ रिस्क दैट एबीसी इन कॉर्पोरेशन इज एक्सपोज्ड टू सिंपल सोवर क्वेश्चन आपको डायरेक्ट टू द क्वेश्चन आंसर करना है सो हियर आई हैव रिटन इन द अबव केस स्टडी गिविंग अ रेफरेंस टू द केस स्टडी एबीसी इन कॉर्पोरेशन इज वल्नरेबल टू फॉरेन एक्सचेंज एक्सपोजर सबसे पहले हमने आइडेंटिफाई किया था कि करेंसी एक्सपोजर के वजह से सारे रिस्क अराइज हो रहे हैं देखो वी हैव सेड दैट The ABC Incorporation is vulnerable to foreign exchange exposure, specifically to the following three types of risk exposure, which we have now explained to you. The first is the transaction risk or exposure. Second is the translation of the accounting risk or exposure. Third is the economic risk or exposure. So, you have given the first answer correctly. In the brief, you have given the examiner that you were able to identify the different types of risk. That were mentioned in the case study. अब आपका काम यहाँ पे खत्म नहीं होता, because this is a 15 mark question and you need to write in at least 550 to 600 words. ठीक है? So now what you need to do is you will have to explain. अब आपको इन तीनों रिस्क को explain करना है with suitable examples to tell the examiner that yes, you have identified the kind of risk. Mentioned in the case study. उसके लिए सबसे पहले आपको एक बहुत basic introduction The format that we follow: introduction, body, and conclusion. So this is the introduction that has been given. Where I said the foreign exchange exposure occurs because of unanticipated changes in the exchange rate. So we have talked about it. कि जब ये भी exchange rate में changes आते हैं, उसके वजह से ही कोई भी entity exposed होता है foreign uh, foreign risk की तरफ. Right now. Fluctuation. What is the impact of the fluctuation in the exchange rate that could have on an entity? So there, I have mentioned that any kind of fluctuation or any unanticipated changes in the foreign exchange rate can affect the value of revenues, the cost, the operations, the assets, the liabilities, as well as the cash flows of a company. Because everything is denominated in a currency, and whenever there is a difference in the exchange rate or fluctuation in the exchange rate, that is going to have an impact. Now, that impact could be adverse and could be favorable as well, depending upon the type of the uh, currency that you have, how strong or weak your currency is. For example, if you have all of your investments in very strong currencies or denominated in very strong currency, you are in a much better position, right? तो ये चीज मैंने यहाँ पे बता दी है कि because of the changes in the exchange rate, such kind of impact could have on an on any international business or any kind of multinational company. Now I've talked about the different kinds of risk. First, I've talked about transaction risk or exposure, where I explained, जो मैंने आपको समझाया था. Whereby we talked about any kind of export or export and import, any kind of transaction uh, involving borrowing or lending in a foreign currency, or any kind of intra-firm flows in an international community. Let's suppose the ABC Incorporation situated in US transfers certain funds to the uh, subsidiary situated in Brazil. अब यहाँ पे currency difference है. Because of that as well, there can be exposure to the currency risk. या फिर फॉरेक्स एक्सपोजर हो सकती है एंड सच टाइम ऑफ रिस्क वुड बी नोन एज ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सपोजर तो वही आप एक्सप्लेन करने की कोशिश करी है दैट दिस एक्सपोजर दैट इज द ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सपोजर अराइजेस व्हेन अ कंपनी हैज इट्स एसेट्स एंड लायबिलिटीज डिनोमिनेटेड राइट द वैल्यू ऑफ व्हिच इज कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअली फिक्स्ड सो यू हैव एक्चुअली फिक्स्ड द ट्रांजेक्शन So let's suppose after three months you are going to pay for the imports of the raw materials that you have purchased from the suppliers situated in China. ठीक है तो वो already fix it. A transaction or a contractual agreement has already been done. And this is the difference which differentiates transaction from any kind of economic exposure. Now these items are to be liquidated in the near future. So in the near future, आप ये transaction पूरा करोगे and with that The exposure to such kind of risk will also come to an 
जब तक ये नहीं होता तब तक आप यू आर एक्सपोज टू दी फॉरेक्स एक्सपोजर और फॉरेक्स रेस ठीक है ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सपोजर एमर्जेस सेम थिंग बिकॉज ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट इम्पोर्ट बोरोइंग लेंडिंग एंड ऑल्सो इन केस ऑफ इंट्रा फॉर्म ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ मनी Now, in order to substantiate कि transaction exposure होता क्या है, I have given a very simple example here, where I have said that, for instance, in the above case study, so I have given a reference to the case study. If ABC Incorporation purchases raw materials worth rupees hundred dollars from China or from its suppliers situated in China to be paid within six months, then till the date of the settlement, that is. Till the expiry of this six-month period, ABC Incorporation will have a transaction exposure of rupees six hundred or rupees hundred dollars. So I hope this is clear to you. Transaction exposure, आपको समझ आ गया है. Let's move forward to the second kind of risk that is accounting or the translation exposure. Simple, we have talked about it. Consolidation exposure भी बोला जाता है. So here it says that it refers to the risk that arises when consolidation of the financial statements of the subsidiary is to be done by the parent company, right? And why is this done? Consolidation क्यों किया जाता है? As I have talked to you, in order to understand the overall profitability of the parent company as a whole, and also to know the competitive performance of its different subsidiaries. Therefore, translation exposure is also known as consolidation exposure or the balance sheet exposure. Simple so far. I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward to the third kind of risk that is the economic risk or exposure. So this arises whenever there is no trans, whenever there is no contractual agreement being done. Uh, rather. The uh, agreement is in work in progress, right? Negotiations हो रही हैं, but transaction fully established नहीं हुई है. So here it says that economic exposure has a bearing on the assets as well as the operating cash flow, therefore having a direct impact on the value of the firm, right? It is also called as operating risk because any kind of changes, let's suppose in the domestic inflation or political instability. Has a bearing on the cash flows of the company. So it says that it is defined as a situation where the company's market value is affected by unavoidable exposure to currency fluctuations as well as economic or political instability. अब इसका भी example बहुत छोटा सा दिया गया है. When I have written that, for instance, a deal for buying or selling of goods under negotiation fully contractual नहीं है ये अभी तक. Now the price. Of goods being negotiated may be affected by fluctuation in the exchange rate. So, if this price we negotiate, कर रहे हो, that can uh, that could be affected because of any changes in the exchange rate, and that changes in the exchange rate could happen because of any political instability. I hope this is clear to you. Now, I have also told here that this gives you brownie points. अगर आप ये चीजें mention करते हो जो बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स मिस आउट कर देंगे दिस इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड यू विद दैट एक्स्ट्रा हाफ मार्क और वन मार्क व्हाट इज दैट यू हैव टोल्ड द एग्जामिनर दैट नो डाउट आई नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीस थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ रिस्क बट आई आल्सो नो दैट इन केस ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन रिस्क देयर इज नो काइंड ऑफ और देयर इज नो इंपैक्ट ऑन द कैश फ्लो देयर इज नो मूवमेंट ऑफ कैश फ्लो सो हैव टू से इन आउट ऑफ द अबव थ्री रिस्क ट्रांसलेशन एक्सपोजर डू नॉट इन्वॉल्व एनी कैश फ्लो While the others, that is the transaction as well as the economic exposure, has an impact on the cash flows of the company. So I hope this is clear to you. Now the second part of the question. Now this question is two parts. Say, I know, I know, we know that during the examination, you will not be getting the opportunity to bold your topics, right? Is के लिए आप क्या कर सकते हो? You can make use of caps law. और अब बाकी ऐसे लेट सपोज बुलेट्स यूज कर सकते हो खुद के बुलेट्स क्रिएट कर सकते हो स्टार मार्क आपने लगा दिया इन ऑर्डर टू डिफ्रेंशियट स्पेसिंग दे दी बीच में इन ऑर्डर टू डिफ्रेंशियट सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द आंसर ठीक है सो दो आईसो गिवन अडिंग वेर बैर से मैनेजमेंट ऑफ रिस्क एक्सपोजर वट टेक्निक्स वट मेथड्स आर टू बी अडॉप्टेड इन ऑर्डर टू मैनेज दीज काइंड ऑफ रिस्क The so first and foremost, I have given a very short introduction here, where I have said that in order to manage these risks, ABC Incorporation should have a strategic approach to risk management. A strategy should be there. A robust risk management uh, practice should be followed so that 
uh, the risk exposure that is arising because of currency fluctuation could be minimized. Okay. So, I say to manage this risk, ABC Incorporation must have a strategic approach to risk management and should adopt appropriate risk management techniques. Up to so for most of you, I know you would have written just a simple one paragraph whereby you would have talked about the different kinds of strategies or the different types of risk management practices that are available in order to minimize the risk. Hedging like they say, zada se zada ab derivatives ka use karte, forward, futures, options and so on. But rather, what I have done in order to segregate and tell the examiner that yes, separate or different approach could be used for different kinds of risk. Because these risks are different in nature, therefore different kinds of approaches need to be followed for all these three kinds of risk. Of which you can answer ko alik bana sakte ho dusro se, right? So transaction ke liye, yaha pe I have written that in, in order to manage any kind of transaction risk, what you can do or what ABC Incorporation can do is it can make use of financial instruments. Financial instruments such as debt, that is forward contracts, options, hedging ka istamal kar sakte hai, whereby let's suppose the company ABC Incorporation knows that after three months I need to make payment in terms of Chinese yuan. So what ABC Incorporation can do is it can have a power contract whereby the prices could be fixed. If I have a contract karna hai and whatever money I get, I could use that in order to make the payment and therefore I am saved from any kind of currency fluctuations. So aise techniques use kar sakte hai, right? So to help any against any adverse movements in the exchange rates between the different kinds of uh, different kinds of currencies that is the Brazilian real, the Chinese yuan as well as the euros. Okay. Apart from using the derivative instruments hedging, what else the company can do? The company can negotiate with the suppliers to denominate prices in USD to reduce transaction risk. Now this line is very specific, specific be here or general maybe I've used as a thing whereby if ABC Incorporation has a good hold over the market, in that case, it can negotiate with the suppliers that whatever the transaction we do, all these transactions will be done in my home currency, that is US dollars. Therefore, even if exchange rates between the Chinese yuan and the US dollars changes or there is a difference, in that case also, the company will be saved from any kind of forex exposure because all of the transactions are now denominated in terms of US dollars itself. So, this is a way you from any kind of transaction risk. Okay? I hope this is making sense to you. Let's move forward to the next type of risk and how are we going to manage them. So, the next risk, risk talks about the translation risk. That is the accounting measure. Now, consolidation ke liye kya use kar sakte ho? First and foremost, I have talked to you that is all its subsidiaries could manage or could maintain their accounts in terms of the current exchange rate between the subsidiary as well as the parent company. So, jo bhi current exchange rate hai, us pe kar sakte hai ya fir US dollar mein hi denominate kar sakte hai. Now, this is specific. Ya to aapko aata hai ya aapko nahi aata. So here I have written that in order to manage any kind of translation risk, ABC can consider using accounting techniques. Accounting techniques such as temporal or current rate translation. Ye kya hota hai? So current rate translation talks about denominating your assets, your liabilities, your revenues, your cost in terms of the current exchange rate between the parent company and the subsidiary. Us mein aap apne transactions ko uh, note down kar sakte ho. Temporary talks about jitne bhi monetary transactions hain, wherever cash flow is associated, be it long term, short term or movement hone wale hai, in all those transactions you can make use of the current exchange rate. However, for other items jo thode se steady hai, let's suppose fixed items hai, usko aapne historical exchange rate pe hi rehne diya. So these are certain accounting techniques that can be used by ABC Incorporation in order to have a better representation or a more accurate representation of the financial performances of the subsidiaries. Okay? It can also consider using financial instruments. In this case, you can use hedging, natural hedging, whereby you know that 
let's suppose the US dollar is strong as compared to the Brazilian real. In that case, you can have certain kind of hedging facility where uh, the effect of the changes in the exchange rate could be mitigated. So, these techniques we are happy use. Kar sakte ho. The third and the last kind of risk is that of economic risk, right? So, here it says that in order to manage economic risk, ABC Incorporation can diversify its operations and revenues across multiple countries. Economic risk ko aap kaise kam kar sakte ho? So, we all know that such kind of risk arises because of economic or the political instability or any kind of domestic influences. In that case, what you can do is you could uh, take or acquire raw materials, be it, uh, be it human labor, whatever it is from different sources. So, what you can do is you can select uh, production loca production location which are located in very low cost location. So, you production facilities jo hai, wo aap low cost production location. Pe rakh sakte ho. You can also adopt flexible sourcing policy whereby you could source many money material from cheap uh, labor markets. Waha se aap cheap laborers ko utha sakte ho, raw materials utha sakte ho. Therefore, the exposure that you are going to have will be very low because your currency will be much stronger as compared to these currencies. Okay? So it says that you can diversify first and foremost, you can diversify your operations, your revenue streams across multiple geographical locations and industries, therefore reducing your exposure to economic risk. You can also conduct certain kind of research and analysis before setting up of any subsidiary or before undertaking any kind of transaction with a different company. Okay? So before entering any new market, you can do research and analysis. Other methods include selecting or uh, having your base, your production base in low cost location and having a flexible sourcing policy in order to source any kind of raw materials or labors. So these are certain kind of techniques or methods that can be used in order to manage the risk. I know it's a technical topic, hai, but yes, distinction is important. And when you don't have static ki clarity, nahi hogi, wisdom nahi aega in order to write a better, crisp, structured answer. Now what you can do is, now you can conclude it. So here I have written the debuff. In the three different strategies to bata di in order to manage the risk. What else can be done? Apart from that, ABC Incorporation can also consider implementing a robust risk management practices and framework, including monitoring of the risk, contingency planning, and the establishment of risk limits and control. So these are certain kind of other things that you could mention. Ki research kar sakta hai, risk management practices follow kar sakti hai, contingency approach, jo aap apne management mein padte ho, wo sari important points aap apne is answer mein dal sakte ho in order to enrich your answer in order to show the examiner that you have a holistic understanding of the entire thing. You are management for management, ke liye chod rahe. you are incorporating the knowledge that you have acquired from there in your finance answers as well to have a company associated here, right? Similarly, lastly, what you can do is you can just write a small two to three line conclusion wherever you can say that any company that uh, that has its operation across multiple geographical locations will be exposed to these kinds of foreign exposures, foreign exchange exposures or risk. And therefore, robust management, risk management practices needs to be adopted in order to survive. Right? So, this is what we mentioned here, where it says that managing transaction risk, translation risk as well as economic risk is essential for companies that operates in multiple currencies in country, geographical locations are like, currencies multiple hai, and by adopting appropriate risk management techniques, implementing a robust risk management framework, ABC can effectively manage its risk and achieve its strategic objectives of establishing and acquiring subsidiaries in Brazil and going beyond in different parts of Latin America. So, here you can see that every answer that I have mentioned or every line that I have used here talks about the case study. Because you have given a case study, diya gaya hai, you will have to give a reference to the case study as and when required. Examiner ko lagna chahiye ki aap bilkul case study se bhatak nahi gaye. You are incorporating the case study in your answers. So, I hope you have got a good understanding as to how you should approach any case study based question. This will help you in RBI exam. And in further classes 
और हम और भी ऐसे क्वेश्चन लेकर आएंगे वेर बाय वी विल ट्राई टू चैलेंज यू ना दिस इज द टाइम वेर यू कैन लर्न अगर आपको कुछ चीजें नहीं आ रही अगर आपको ये टफ लग भी रहा है विद दिस सेशन यू आर नाउ क्लियर विद अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्चुअल टॉपिक रिगार्ड विद रिगार्ड टू दी डिफरेंट टाइम्स ऑफ फॉरन एक्सचेंज एक्सपोजर सो प्लीज मेक फुल यूज ऑफ सच वीडियो इन ऑर्डर टू एनरिच योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू अप्रोच अ केस बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आई होप यू एंजॉय द सेशन इन केस ऑफ एनी डाउट इन केस इफ यू हैव एनी अदर रिक्वायरमेंट दैट यू कैन मैंशन इट डाउन इन दी कमेंट सेक्शन me and our team at ajc will help you to uh to will help you to answer all your queries and come up with such beautiful sessions in future in future ahead so this was all for today i hope you enjoyed the session please learn practice hard and make use of the time in order to have a short short selection in the examination thank you bye bye